Right, so Apple have just announced these two brand new powerhouse laptops for 2023, the 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pros. And safe to say it's getting a little bit ridiculous. So I have both here. I have the 14-inch silver M2 Pro MacBook Pro and the 16-inch in space gray with the M2 Max chip inside. So what are the differences between the two chips? What upgrades would you necessarily feel coming from a year old or so MacBook Pro with an M1 series chip inside or even older going back to the Intel days? And what in a nutshell do these two new machines mean for you? Firstly not a lot in terms of design. Quite frankly they're basically identical. Hey. Now this was kind of expected with this release. Apple tend to have a, a minimum of like a three year or even sometimes longer upgrade cycle when it comes to changing anything drastic with regards to the look. But I must admit, I am a little surprised they didn't go with a face ID feature. It kind of seemed primed they were gonna include that ever since they moved to this notch design on the MacBook devices. If I were a betting man, I do still feel we will see a face ID feature at some point, possibly with the inclusion of kind of a dynamic island-esque set of features as well across the top, again like we see in the latest iPhones, but I could be wrong. Now as well as that notch, we also don't see any real display upgrades on the whole from the 2021 model. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because that was excellent. And you also have the same ports as well as the previous gen. So that means MagSafe 3, three Thunderbolt 4s, a headphone jack, an SD card slot, and of course an HDMI as well. Although there has been an upgrade on that HDMI, we now have 2.1. I probably think it possibly should have already been included on the previous gen having 2.1, um, but nevertheless, that has been upgraded. So that means the external display support has been improved, now up to 8K at 60 hertz output. Outside of that, same keyboard, same touchpad, same colors, you get the idea. So if it walks like a duck and cracks like a duck, why would you go and buy one of these if you already have a 14 inch or 16 inch previous gen MacBook Pro? like this one here. Wow, that is dirty. I apologize, I'm filthy. Well, quite simply, it is a spec button. Let's cut away the fat here. But how will that affect you day to day? Who are these two new machines for? Well, these two new Apple Silicon chips are there to continue where the M2 left off, as seen in the MacBook Air and MacBook 13 of last year, and also on the Mac Mini one of the models, because there's also one with an M2 Pro in as well. So you have an M2 and an M2 Pro, Mac minis. A lot of numbers, a little bit confusing, but here's the crux. Apple already claimed that the M2 chip was five times faster than the best-selling Windows desktop. Quite what machine they tested it against and quite what tests they ran, I don't know. But the M2 Pro and M2 Max are just a ramped up version, scaling up that M2 architecture to raise the bar even further. 40 billion transistors in the Pro version for a chip that small is utterly ridiculous. Like, how is it even possible to produce something that powerful in such a small package? I guess size is in everything. Twice the memory bandwidth of the standard M2, and you can scale it up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory, which in itself is one major difference between the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, because we can have up to 96 gigabytes in this model, if you go with the 38 core GPU option, which is absolutely ridiculous. Not the word of the day. But what if, like I said, you have the M1 Pro MacBook Pro from last year or 2021. Well, the newer gen model offers up to 20% faster CPU performance thanks to its new 12 cores, eight high performance and four high efficiency. So the main improvements that would be experienced there would be things like having lots of apps running in the background, or lots of browser tabs, or your Netflix binge activities, music playlists, spreadsheets, and the like. Crushing lots of little tasks all at the same time. But the M2 Pro also has a 30% enhanced GPU performance as well. So think things like video editing, Photoshop, gaming, those sorts of activities. And they've also improved the neural engine, meaning you should see improvements to the speed of image processing and other machine learning tasks. Again, by up to 40% 
Apple claim. Of course, these numbers are absolutely dwarfed if you're coming from an Intel Mac, with the M2 Mac Mini, for example, being up to 15 times faster than its Intel counterpart, which is just extraordinary. Just noticed some sandwich crumbs on the table there from earlier. I really am horrific. But specifically for the MacBook Pros, if you are video editing and you've got lots of layers, titles, transitions, etc., then you should see up to 20% faster rendering speeds. And again, if you're coming from an i9 Intel machine, for example, which I actually had, I think I had the 2000 and I can't remember, 16, 17, 18. The years blend into one. I had the i9 and when I jumped to the M1 Pro from that, I noticed an, a remarkable difference. It really was incredible, astronomical. So if you are coming from an Intel machine, you are gonna be blown away. The difference is scary. Coding is 25% faster, Photoshop image processing 40% faster. Just quite simply, if you are a creator and you love macOS, then this will drastically improve your flirt. Flirt flow? <laughs> flirt, don't flirt. Work, workflow was what I was trying to say. Flirt flow, hey. If you want to go and flirt flow, be my guest. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but what about its big sibling, the M2 Max, the Stonkathon? Apple, if you want to use that for your marketing, you can do the, the Stonkathon 3000. <laughs> MacBook Pro 16 inch with M2 Max. It's a Stonkathon. I apologize for that. That is probably the worst American accent I think I've ever heard. <laughs> so for you US viewers, Please take the apology. I will never do that again. So what are the differences? Well, quite simply, the M2 Max has the same CPU as the M2 Pro. It just has a bumped up, improved, enhanced GPU. So this is angled towards the creator even more so. 67 billion transistors, 10 billion more than the M1 Max, and up to 30% faster GPU performance. And also, without testing, before I forget, um, Apple claim up to an hour's battery life improvement over the previous gen. So I was incredibly impressed with the M1 Pro battery life. So if we are getting an hour extra, then that's just even more incredible. Because again, I noticed that big jump between the Intel and the M1 Pro. So for me, this is quite a clear one. In my opinion, if you are coming from an M1 series MacBook Pro, because of the basically exactly the same chassis, it means it's quite a hard sell, especially when you factor in the pricing, which is eye-watering, to say the least. Unless you are a creator and the improvements, especially in that GPU area, are worthy enough. For day-to-day -day tasks, running a few apps, bit of light gaming, office spreadsheets, browsing the internet, what most people tend to do in a day I honestly don't think you will notice the difference coming from the M1 series, if I'm being completely honest. I don't think you really need all this power. But if you held off the M series chip bandwagon up until now, and are still rocking an Intel machine, then the difference is truly astronomical. And if you have the cash, the upgrade will be definitely worthwhile for you, in my opinion. And you've got to remember that these machines are pros in the name. They are catered, they are angled towards the professional. So again, even though the upgrade might be slight from the M1 Pro or M1 Max, if it is going to help you out, if you're going to save half an hour here, half an hour there, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, on your continued workflow, again, if you have the cash, that upgrade might be beneficial for you. Either way, two fantastic machines. Question is, are they worth it for you for that extra cash outlay? Let me know in the comments what you think about these two brand new machines. I will be testing these much more extensively over the coming days and weeks, and I will do a follow-up video, hopefully uh, a full kind of after my real world use. If you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram as well for much more short form content and behind the scenes updates as well. My name's Adam, you've been the best. I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Say it's BYT, peace out.